Okay, so today we're going to do the gas laws. And first of all, we're going to talk about Boyle's law. Boyle's law is P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay, so that's the basic formula that we're going to be dealing with today. The idea of Boyle's law is that as the pressure increases, the volume decreases. That's an inversely proportional reaction. So as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. Kind of like a teeter-totter. It's going to balance it out. So if the pressure goes up, the volume's going to go down. If the volume goes up, the pressure is going to go down. A good example of this is in a syringe. Okay, so when you have a syringe, you have a needle, it's going to have a lot of volume and regular pressure. If I push on that syringe, what's going to happen is the volume is going to decrease of the gas inside the syringe. That's because the pressure is being pushed down. Okay, so that's basically what Boyle's Law is. Now how to use this formula is the pressure, which can be discussed in several different units. So pressure can be found in millimeters of mercury. It can also be found in kilopascals or in atmosphere. Okay. It doesn't matter which type of pressure you actually use, just as long as you use the same units for both kinds. So both sides, pressure one and pressure two, have to both be found in the same units. You can't have millimeters of mercury on one side and kilopascals on the other side. Volume is going to be found in liters, preferably, or milliliters if you really want to. And again, they just have to have the same units on either side for volume one and volume two. Now we're going to do an example for Boyle's Law right now. door, we know that we're looking for the initial pressure. That's because we're given that when the door slams shut, the pressure turns up to 136.94 kilopascals with a volume of 0.017 liters. The initial volume of the pneumatic door is going to be 0.25 liters. So first things first, we list our variables or what we know from the equation or from the question. Now we're going to plug that into our actual equation. So we're going to leave P1 as is. We're going to plug in, we have 0.25 liters. Remembering always to include your units in your actual equation. And that's going to be equal to 136.94 kilopascals multiplied by the 0.017 liters. How we're going to rearrange this formula is we're going to divide by the 0.25 liters to get P1 all by itself. And what you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. If you look at it now, our 0.25 liters actually cancels out on the left-hand side, and the units of liters cancel out on the right-hand side. That leaves us with the units of kilopascals, which is what we want our pressure to actually be in. When we plug into this equation, we get a resultant 9.31192 kilopascals. Remembering sig figs in chemistry, we're going to look at the least number of sig figs, which happens to be 2 from the volume 2. So when we put 9.31192 into sig figs, we actually get a pressure 1 of 9.3 kilopascals. Let's think about it if that makes sense. So, as the pressure increases, the volume decreases. So our initial pressure is 9.3. And as it goes up, the volume goes from 0.25 to 0.017. Makes sense. Yeah. The second guess law we're going to talk about is Charles' law. 
Trial's law is volume 1 divided by temperature 1 is equal to volume 2 over temperature 2. So we're going to focus on that. As you can see, it's not an inversely proportional uh, equation anymore. This one is actually directly proportional, which means as the volume increases, the temperature is also going to increase. Or if the temperature decreases, the volume is also going to decrease. This makes sense because of the kinetic molecular theory. So what happens to the molecules as they start heating up? They start getting more excited, and they spread out, and the volume gets bigger. That's basically Charles' law. So what we're going to do now is you have to realize that volume is going to be in liters or milliliters, just like normal, just like we did in Boyle's law. However, temperature is going to be measured in Kelvin. What Kelvin is, is your degree Celsius plus 273. Okay? So you always have to remember to change your temperature into Kelvin. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer, and the proportion will be off. Now we're going to do an example. You change your mind like a girl changes clothes. Yeah, you PMS like a bitch. I would know. And you overthink, always speak critically. I should know. A common example of Charles Law is the hot air balloon. That's because as the temperature increases, the volume of the gas inside their hot air balloon is actually going to get bigger and your hot air balloon is going to rise. So we have the example where our volume one of our hot air balloon at ST SATP is 1,295.375 liters. We also have that we're at SATP, which we have to remember is 25 degrees Celsius, which calculates out to 298 Kelvin. Okay, Our volume two, as, it heats, as the gas heats up, is 3,067.83 liters. And we're looking for what temperature that would actually require for the balloon to get that big. So what we do is we actually plug in the numbers into our V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 after we've listed our variables, just like we do in physics. Okay, so we plug them in, and we realize that we're solving for T2, which is on the bottom. What I like to do is I like to solve for the one side that has no variables as a whole number. Makes it a little bit easier to manipulate the actual equation. So we get 1295.375 divided by 298 which equals to 4.34689. And that's liters per Kelvin, which is equal to 3067.83 liters divided by T2. Now, in order to get T2 by itself and to solve for it, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to bring T2 over to this side of the equation because you can't solve for something on the bottom of the equation. So you multiply it over and then you're going to divide by this 4.34689 liters per Kelvin. And we end up getting 705.751888 Kelvin. Okay, and remembering sig figs in this question, because you're given SATP, which is 25 degrees Celsius, we're going to use three sig figs, which because it turns into 298 Kelvin, and we can assume it's 25.0 in SATP. Okay, that's our least number of sig figs. So how to write 705.75 into three sig figs is going to be 706. So in order to get 3,067.83 liters, you're going to have to jack the temperature up to 706 Kelvin, which is really hot, but that's a lot of air in there. The third law we have is the combined gas law. And what the combined ga gas law does is exactly what it says. It combines both Boyle's law and Charles' law, puts them together, and creates a new formula. So what we have here is we have P1V1 equals P2V2, and we're adding in V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So what you actually end up with is P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. The trends in this equation then is, just like in Boyle's law, as the pressure increases, the volume is going to decrease. 
And if the volume goes down, what happens to the temperature? It's also going to go down. Okay. That being said, if the temperature goes up, what's going to happen is the volume of the gas is also going to go up, which causes the pressure to go down. Okay. So this is combined gas law. It's really combining Boyle's and Charles' law. We're going to put it together in an example. gas law that I can think of is a bubble floating up from the bottom of the ocean. So what we have in this example is we have a bubble at the bottom of the ocean with a temperature of 3.4 degrees Celsius. We calculated that to be 276.4 Kelvin. We don't know the volume, that's what we're actually going to solve for in this question, and we know that the pressure at the bottom of the ocean is 127 kilopascals. Again, at the top of the water, we have a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius in the ocean, which is pretty cold for water. And that equals to 285 degrees Kelvin. We have a volume of the bubble that is 24 milliliters, and we have a pressure of 100.98 kilopascals. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the numbers into the equation and solve for a volume 2. Pressure 1 is 127.4 kilopascals. We're actually solving for volume 1, and our temperature is 276.4. Kelvin. Okay. Our pressure number two is 100.98 Kelvin or kilopascals. Our volume two is equal to 24 milliliters. And our temperature is 285 Kelvin. Noticing now that our volume on this side is milliliters, so our answer is also going to be in milliliters. Again, what you're going to do is you're going to create this number as a whole number, multiply by 276.4, and then divide by 127.4 kilopascals to get that all by themselves. That's a manipulating of the equation. I hope you know how to do that already. I'm not going to go through that in this example. So, the volume to 1, when we plug it all in, just let me plug it in, I'll give you time. We get a volume 1 of 18.45 milliliters for this bubble. Again, you're going to do sig figs. And noticing that this 3.4 degrees Celsius is actually only two sig figs, you're going to have to put 18.45 into two sig figs. How you can do that is you're actually just going to say 18 milliliters. So, so far we've gone over Boyle's Law, which is the trend for as the volume increases, the pressure increases. Ooh, sorry. So, so far we've gone through Boyle's Law, which is as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down, or vice versa. So if the volume goes up, the pressure is going to go down. Uh, the second one we've went through is Charles' Law, which is as the volume goes up, the temperature goes up, or as the volume goes down, the temperature goes down. And thirdly, we went through combined gas law, which is as the pressure and the pressure goes up, the volume and the temperature goes down. Or, as the temperature goes up, the volume will go up and the pressure will go down. These are three examples. Now we're going to go on to something more intense with moles, which is basically all of chemistry.